Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Excel to calculate chi-squared. So this is particularly useful if you've chosen chi-squared to be your further process for your mathematical studies project. So over on the left you can see a set of data and if you've gone about collecting your data you've probably got somewhere in the vicinity of 60 pairs of values which is quite difficult to get together into groups which is what we've got to do. So remember, chi-squared, it's going to look like it's going to have an X columns going down here, or rows. We're going to split all those Xs into groups. And then we're going to have Y going across the top here. And the important thing is we don't want too few groups. We don't want a two by two table because that gives us a degrees of freedom of one. But we don't want too many because one of the risks is if we get our expected frequencies um, too low, then it's not valid, the statistic. So we're going to try and, and make a few columns, but not too few, if that makes any sense. So first thing, let's look at how X scores, and let's find the minimum and the maximum so that we know what our boundaries are. So I'm just colouring in all of those values, and I've just done equals min. So our minimum is 5. Then I'm going to do the max and go all the way to the top. Here it is, colour it in, all the way down, close the brackets, and there it is. All right, so I've got a minimum of five and a maximum of 14, so I'm going to split that into two groups, I've decided. Now you can use equation editor, if you like, which you just insert, I should probably do that too quick, let's do that again. Insert equation, it just does this here, it's just a little annoying is all. And our lowest value was 5, less than or equal to x, and the boundary is going to be 10, I've decided. That's just about halfway. So it kind of types it nicer for you, but they sort of are floating formulas, if you like. Or you can just type it like this, 10 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 14 was our highest. I need space. Oops, not there. Here. Right, so that gives us our two groups for x. Let's have a look at y. I can just copy this across. So the minimum y is 5 and the maximum is 24. So in this case, I'm going to split it into four groups of 5, because it's roughly 20 values. All right, so from 5 is less than or equal to y. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is less than 9. And then I'm going to have 9 is less than or equal to y is less than 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And I have 13 is less than or equal to y is less than 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And then 17 is less than or equal to y is less than 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And then just the rest of them, 21 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 24. All right, I think I'm not sure if I said four groups or five. We've ended up with five. So our degrees of freedom, do you remember how to work that out? It's the number of rows, take away one. So this that's one. And the number of columns, take away one. So that's four. So our degrees of freedom is four. And that's pretty good. If your degrees of freedom gets too high, the chi-squared value that you've got to get over to reject the null hypothesis is too high. So we need to make, you know, an educated decision about what we're going to, how we're going to group our data. All right, now the next bit we're going to do is get all of this stuff into this table. And this is, I mean, imagine going through and trying to find out this cell here has to be how many X values are there between five and 10 that also have Y values between five and nine. Nightmare. But luckily, Excel is very clever. Equals count ifs. So the count part is going to count the cells that it finds. The if part means it's going to have a criteria. And the ifs means we're going to have multiple criteria which we need. All right, so first thing is going to be on our x's. So let's grab all of our x's. So let's go back up. So we're going to count if the x's, whoops, 
comma, and you've got to put this bit in quotes, which is a bit bizarre. We want it to be greater than or equal to five. So that's the very first one. And, which is another comma, also our x's, I'm just going to type it in, it's painful getting it every time. A61, comma, what do we want it to be? Less than nine. So that's the bit, first bit. And now the Y column, B2, B61 has to be, what does B have to be? Actually, that was wrong. This one's less than 10, I was reading the wrong thing. So it's here, okay? So there's the A, the X's, greater than or equal to five, less than 10. And then this one is greater than or equal to five, less than nine. So our criteria for our B's is greater than or equal to five, Got to write this range again every single time, which is annoying too. B61, comma, um, less than 9. Well, I think that's right. 12. Let's assume it is. Now, we can copy this across. Let's just have a look and see what happens though. Okay, let's have a look. So it's moved it across like that, so we don't want that. We want this to be A. In each case, you can go and put in absolute references, but painful. These are just A's here. This is B's. So that's the start. Whoops. Um, and we have to change these. That's going to stay the same because that's there. These ones are going to change 9 to 13. So greater than or equal to 9, less than 13. So that's 12. So that's good, isn't it? All right, here, I'm going to move this to A, and then that's also A, still worth copying, I think, B, 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 I don't know why it's doing that, let's go back here, All right, and we just could change this one, so 13 and 17, oh, it hasn't got any, that's interesting, and changing this, we've got A, a, you get a bit good at this by the end of it all, A, and then B, whoops, B, 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 and just changing that top line again, 17 this time, and 21, and then finally, this last one here, A, 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 B, 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 and changing that last one to 21, and I'll have to put an equals in here, 24, because I know I've got those. Enter. Now, interestingly enough, those numbers there, so I have made a mistake, should add to 60, shouldn't they? No, they shouldn't. The whole lot should. No, that's right. That's half of them. That's okay. All right, let's copy this down. So this is giving us, now you can see it's moved from A2 to A3. So these are the ones we're going to have to change now, changing this back to A2 and 61 in every case. B2, B61, B2, B61. Let's have a look at the values, um, these ones here will be fine, because that's that. These ones have changed. So I want this to be 10, and this one to be less than or equal to 14. Okay, copy it across, and then what we've got to do is change it each time. I know this is tedious. So once we get to the end of all of that, then we will have our table all set up. At that point, actually, it's not too bad to do, to actually just use this formula and work it out, but I'm going to show you how to do it on Excel anyway. Um, what else we got to change here? The nine, that's okay, that first bit here, nine to 13. And here I'm going to change all the A's. And the B's, and 
this one here to 13 and this one to 17. Oh, two to go. A, 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 B, 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 and then this guy here to 17 and this one here to 21. Remember when we did this in class, we couldn't get them to get 60 values no matter how hard we tried. We just had made a mistake somewhere. There was a lot of problem solving going on trying to figure out where the mistake was. I hope I don't have to do that here. You may have already seen a mistake I've made. And equals 24. All right, what's the chances? Equals sum. It's just... Yes! 60. All right, so there it is in a table. So these are, of course, our observed values, isn't it? Okay, so that's these ones here. We also need to work out the expected ones. So what I'm going to do in this case is grab all of this and put it down here. I'm going to get rid of all of these ones in here. And these are going to be the expected Okay, remember the expected value formulas when you, they ask you to work out a particular cell? They're just the probabilities. Actually, we might do some totals here. Equals sum of those two. Sum it all the way along the end on the bottom. Equals sum oops, of all of these. And add that up. There we go. So there's our totals. All right, so here's our expected values. Equals 60 times by as an asterisk. The probability that it's in here, so that's 12 out of 60 times by, no, sorry, it's 13 out of 60. Start again. So it's 60 times. Not the 12, the probability that it's going to be in there is 13 out of 60. So 13 out of 60 times, now go all the way along to the end here, 25 out of 60. Okay, so there's our expected value in there. We can't copy this across because I haven't used any cell references, so we have to work it out for each one. And it'd be too painful by the time you did it. So equals 60 times. All right, so we're going to the bottom of the column there, 24 divided 60 times end of the row, 25 over 60. Um, in here, equals 60 times the bottom one, which is 12 over 60 times, what's at the end there, 25 over 60. And we just have to work our way through the columns and each cell, unfortunately, to work these out. 25 if I don't make a mistake equals 60 times 5 over 60 times 25 over 60 all right there's all of those and now we're working out the bottom one equals 60 is another reason why you don't want too many columns and rows isn't it 13 out of 60 times 35 out of 60 Suppose, in a way, if we do copy this across, I've only got to change one number, don't I? This one, 24. Just realised I was wasting my time. The other bit's going to stay the same. This one will be 12. This one would be 6. And this one here would be 5. All right, what's the sum of all of these? Add those all up and we get 60. All right, so that's our expected values. Looking at our formulas, we need our observed minus our expected, squared, then divided by F, our expected values, and then summed. All right, so we're going to do an observed minus expected table. This one will be relatively easy. So I'll copy that one down. So observe, so equals the observed values minus 
the expected in each case. Uh, that should work for all of those. Let's see what happens when we go down here. Let's have a look at the formula. Yep, that worked too. Did I just change it? No. Okay. So there's our observed minus expected. Let's save some space and square these as well to the power of two. So I'm gonna take that there, put it in brackets to the power of two. And it worked when we copied it all down, didn't it? It won't move. I'll just copy it all and we'll just have to check and make sure it's right. So F11 minus F18, put it in here, F, F11, yep, minus F18 all squared. And that one, yep, that's all good. I'll just put that in. Don't like that about Excel. Right. So there's our observed minus expected all squared. That's that bit. The last bit we've got to do is divide by the expected value, which is here. So let's do that as well in the same table. Divided by expected. So I take this and in this I'm going to do divided by our expected value, which is that one. Okay. Copy him down. Copy all the way across. All right, last bit we're going to do, sum it. Remember how I did that before? Just through here, equals sum and da, 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 close the brackets. And so our chi-squared value, calculated value is 28.08. So it's quite high, isn't it? It probably would be able to reject your null hypothesis. 